Hello, it's me, and there are different phases that we go through in life. Sometimes it's a heavy metal phase. Sometimes it's a college phase. Right now, I'm in a face-turning octahedron phase. Um, I've always enjoyed face-turning octahedrons because, uh, well, first off, they're platonic solids, and I have a thing for platonic solids, but also they're ver very much like the Master's Cube. And ever since doing the uh, uh, doing Raphael's brilliant ghost octahedron, ghost face turning octahedron, I wanted to take some of the algorithms that I came up with to solve it and apply it to maybe something a little more simple, such as this guy over here, which is the axis octahedron. So uh, this again is made by Raphael and made uh, perfectly. This is a three D three dimensionally designed. And, uh, well, it's an axis version of this. So it has some attributes that are kind of like the ghost cube, but maybe a little bit more easy to follow. So I figured I'd do a scramble and solve of this because my hope is to make this very popular and to put this in the hands of a lot of people because it really is a fantastic solve experience. So before embarking on the solve, I think it's necessary to define our perspective with this because what you think are corners are actually not corners. And what you think are centers are actually not centers. So you have to change your thinking about this a little bit, change your, your perspective. And what I really like is the fact that he brilliantly used exactly the same color scheme. So congratulations, Raphael. Another triumph of reasoning. So when looking at this, if I were to compare it to the, um, if, if I were to compare it to the axis cube, again, you think, are these centers over here? Um, they're actually not, this is the center. So what appears to be an edge is a center, but we can't, we can't look at this, these pieces as exactly equivalent. Okay, so here's what I mean. There's actually not a corner over here. So what are the corners? Well, this doesn't turn on, on its face. If I try to turn it, it won't work. So you can't say corner, 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 and think that that's gonna work because it's not just like this is. So what are the actual corners of this? And what are the actual centers? This is not the center. So as I turn this, this is actually the face over here. So what are the corners? Well, the corners are gonna be the ones that are on the well, axis of rotation here, axis of platonic rotation. So actually, this is not a corner. This is an edge. Um, this is a corner over here. This is a corner, so these two things that look like edges are not edges, they're corners. The only corner that looks like a corner is this guy. And you can see that this corner is surrounded by little triangles. Just like this corner is surrounded by little triangles. And this corner over here is also surrounded by little triangles. This is an edge. This, this corner piece, corner looking piece is actually an edge. This center looking piece is actually an edge and anything around here are triangles. So each side consists of one corner piece that actually looks like a corner piece, and two corner pieces that are two colors. Um, in terms of the center, well the center is this piece over here that looks like a triangle. So as I turn this, this is the axis of rotation. So that is nicely confusing. Uh, so without any further ado, why don't we go into the uh, scramble with this, but the difference also that you're going to find with this puzzle is the fact that the uh, center is rotated. Uh, well, the center has specificity, so this is actually a super cube version of this. So this is a super octahedron, basically. Now, as you recall, from time to time, I might have to do center rotation, because over here, uh, center rotation didn't really mean anything, and I came up with an algorithm. Now, it messes these sides up, but that's okay, because I can put the center in after, um, well, before I put these triangles in, so I don't really care if it messes that up. It's just the nature of a sequential solve, and, and that's actually fine. But to do that, what I did is I had an algorithm where I start off like this, and I'll, uh, with the corner in front of me, and do R, U, R, I, U, R, U, R, I, U. Okay, so my R, U, R, I, U was with the corner in front of me. Then I go to the next face over here and put this edge in front of me over here. And these corners are out. I simply rotate these corners in the position where they're supposed to be and then rotate these edges in. But this time, instead of doing it with a corner in front of me, I put it with the edge in front of me and do R, U, R, I, U, R, U, R, I, 
you. And although you can't see it, take my word for it, this got rotated. Now it also caused these to switch around too, but again, that doesn't really matter much to me because uh, that's gonna be put in later. So for those who have this puzzle and are wondering about how to do that, well, I'm gonna put a corner in front of me, it'll be this one, and this is gonna rotate this guy. And I'm just gonna do R, U, R, I, U, R, U, R, I, U. Okay, now with this corner in front of me, I have to flip it to this side, this side over here. So this is the edge that's gonna be in front of me here like so. And these corners are gonna be the point at which I'm gonna be turning. So now I'm gonna move my edge, my corners in. So this corner has to move over to here, as you can see it belongs here. Then I just do, with the edge in front of me, R, U, R, I, U, R, U, R, I, yeah. U. Okay, so you can see these corners got out of sort, but that's okay, because at the end of the day, this got rotated. And because I'm gonna do the rotation of all the, all the centers in first before I hit this, doesn't really matter. Um, I'm not looking for a pure rotation because that's gonna be part of my, um, part of my sequential solve. Uh, in terms of the algorithm to move these guys, well, I already showed you the algorithm to move uh, this, but it's going to be the same thing as the algorithm that I use over here. It's just a question of perspective bending. This will go here, this will go here, and this will go here. And that's where I go down, 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 up, up, down, up, up. So I can finish the puzzle, finish this all that way. So it's going to be the same kind of thing. I'm going to keep this the way it is, but if I wanted to move these in, then uh, I just have to find a corner, in this case it's here, find a triangle that'll come into its space, which is this. So this will go here, this will go here, and this will go here. So it'll put these two in. So that's gonna be down, and now down, down, up, and up, and down, up, up, and as you can see, this is now in, and I put this one in here too. Now, even though I may know what's happening, it still is a perspective bender. So, for the sake of demonstration, I'm gonna go ahead and scramble this, and then go through, not a full vlog solve of this, but just kind of hit the high points, should you have this puzzle and you needed some guidance. Right, Jessica? Right, wait, pause. Okay, I'm paused. I'm not really paused. Um, why are you messing up off camera? I'm not, so I'm just going to turn the sound down and put music in the background or something. Oh. <laughs> Okay, so a nice scrambled mess of a puzzle. You know, I, I still issue the challenge of somebody sending me a puzzle not seen before, completely scrambled, and uh, me having to figure out how the heck to solve it, or what shape it's supposed to be. So, an example, if, if this came to be scrambled, how would I figure that out? I'd have to find out, okay, is it a face turner? If it's a face turn, this is obviously a center, these are edges, and somehow derive that. So. If you have a puzzle like this, the first part of the solve, uh, if I were to solve this, is I'd actually put the corners in around the center. Um, that's what I would do. So, what were my centers? Here's the center over here. So I'm gonna put in a corner that goes with that. So this is corner position. Uh, let's see, this is corner position over here, and this is corner position over here. So I got these two over here. Um, so what I'm gonna want is this yellow will correlate with this. So I'm gonna put this into this position. Still have to kind of get used to the movement here. This will come here. I know this will come up over here. Right position, wrong rotation. So I gotta rotate it around. And there's something about 
this rotation that makes it difficult. As long as I just kind of line my corners up, move this over here, and I don't want to lose sight of what I was doing. Okay, so we're still not rotated correct. Uh, let's see, yeah, so I'm gonna continue to orbit this around. Nope, okay, there I found a way to sorta do it. Okay, this is not gonna like it over here. So I'm gonna wanna put it over here. Like so, aha, okay. Um, we like this, we can see that this and this is in the same plane, so we're good there. So green, I'm looking for a green now. And actually, as I think of it, if this is corner position, this is corner position, and this is corner position, uh, here I'm looking for a green and yellow. So it's probably gonna be this. Move this in a corner position, you can see it's rotated wrong. So I'm just gonna do my turny thing. This will come here, bring it here, and I'll bring it up, aha! This happens to be in two, so this correlates with this. Um, so this corner's right and this corner's right in conjunction with this center. And now I just have to put this one in and this is gonna be any green one. So any one with a green, which is this guy. So it belongs here, but it's upside down. So let's go ahead and twirl this around. I have to find another, okay. Move it like so. And now move it up. And it's very easy to lose concentration. Up to here, aha, okay. So basically what we have is these corners are correct in conjunction with the center. Because these greens line up, these yellows line up, and this, well that just informs this center over here. And as you can see, this is the wrong center, because the center that I want has to be purple and red. That's going to be this guy over here. So we're going to move this into the proper position of the center. Uh, however, there we go. Right like this. Okay, now, I got a little lucky because this center is rotated correctly. Just like that. Now, if it wasn't rotated correctly, that's okay. I could rotate it correctly, or I don't have to. That can be done later. So this center is correct over here. Um, which means this center is also correct because this is orange and yellow, and that's this. You can see it's not rotated correct. We could put it in now or not. I'm going to say that we shouldn't because it's going to get messed up anyway when I put edges in. So as part of my sequential solve, first step is putting corners in. Second step is putting in edges in. Third step is rotating the center. And the, and the fourth step is putting in these uh, triangular pieces. Now, so basically what I'm going to do now, and we can confirm that this is correct also, this pink and green, is once I have the top corners in, I just have three more corners to go. So if I turn it upside down, I got to do these corners here. Now seeing where we're at, one of which is probably going to be rotated right side up, the other two are upside down. This appears to be right side up. The reason why I say that is because this is up and the blue is up. This yellow is uh, should not be facing up because there's no yellow here. This one, this blue, should be up, but it's not, so this is upside down. And in this case, the white should be up because the white has the center, so this is upside down. So when I'm in a situation like that, I simply hold it to where the two that are rotated wrong are going to be held over here to the right side or to the left side, doesn't matter. This one is not going to be moved initially. So the first two are going to be the two that are rotated wrong. And I simply go down, down, up, up. And what that should have done is rotated everything correctly, and it did because you can see this blue matches here, this white matches here, this white matches here, and this blue matches here. So that's all it took. Now you can see that it's a lot easier from a perspective with this guy. This one I have to take, take it in very subtle clues. So these corners are actually now correct. Some of the centers are rotated right, some of them are not. So I'm not going to work on them yet.